In this video, we are going to implement a static enemy that will be able to detect our player. And as you can see that the target is detected and it is visible. So this detector is what we are going to implement in this video. Let's get going. This video is part of the series of videos about creating a 2D top-down tank game. We will explore different features of this game, each as a standalone video. Hi, I'm Peter and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. Currently in our game we have an enemy tank that we can shoot, but it doesn't do anything beyond that. So I would like to create a static enemy in this video. So let's take a look what a simple static enemy would need. First of all, we would need to be able to detect the player when it is approaching, so when we are approaching to the enemy. Next thing that I want to implement is the ability to rotate the turret towards the player. So finally we can perform a shot. And if the enemy is not uh, seeing the player, if the player is not in range of the enemy, I would like to have patrol rotate randomly while idle kind of behavior. Okay. Now, when we create the static enemy, we will have all the code that we need to implement a moving enemy that will patrol areas that we give it, or the path that we give it. But for now, let's start with the static enemy. First of all, I will create a new folder here in the scripts folder, and I will call it AI. Next, I will go into this folder and create a new script. I will call it AI Detector. Okay, let me open it in Visual Studio. Okay, great. I will delete the start and update. So first of all, I will want to paste here a couple of fields and properties that we will use to communicate the values for the detection. Great. First of all, we have our view radius. And if we take a look at our game, this will describe the circle around our enemy. We're going to cast a circular ray cast around our enemy and we will detect any object that has a collider with a or on a layer called player. And we're going to create this layer very soon. And basically we will be able to detect if the player is in range of our enemy. Next we have detection check delay. So probably we do not want to check or rather cast a circular ray cast every frame. We may want to decrease the number of casts to maybe every 0.1 of a second so that we can lower the overhead of our on our computational power that one enemy requires. Next, we have a transform target and the target will be the game object detected by our detection system. And we are going to have a property that is public, privately set, and we are going to use this target property to expose it to other classes that may want to access it. We are going to also have two layer masks that allows us to set on which layer our player should be or our game object should be so our enemy can detect it and set it as the target as well as the visibility layer. So for example, our obstacles and if we want to our trees could have a layer that will block the detection of our player. So if our player would hide behind those obstacles, our enemy would not be able to see it. And that is the idea. And of course we can implement uh, it in such a way that if the enemy is in front of the other enemy, the enemy behind will not be able to shoot because the second enemy will block its view as well. So this is why we have those two layer masks. And we will have target visible property that will allow our enemy AI to function a bit better, so we are not going to check if target is null, rather we are going to check if it is visible or not before we start messing with our target. Great! So now let's explore the methods responsible for detecting the target, if we uh, have a target. Okay, so let's take a look. First of all, we have a main method called detect target, and our detect target will be called in a coroutine. So here we will simply yield return a new wait for seconds detection check delay to simply wait for 0.1 second before we perform the target detection and after we perform the target detection we are going to rerun the score routine and again we are going to wait 0.1 second before we again detect the target. Now detect target itself will simply check if our target is equal to null. If our target is equal to null, we are going to check if player is in range. 
the target might at this time move out of the detection area, so we need to check if our target is in range or not. So for our check if player is in range, we are going to simply get the first collider that is hit by our physics 2D.overlap circle, and we are passing the transform position, which is the position of our detector, the view radius for the radius, and we have the player layer masks, which will detect the player objects only. So if the collider is on the layer called player, it will be detected by this overlap circle. Now, if there are no objects of type player, the collision will return null. So only if it is not null, we are going to set it to be the target. Now, other case was if the target is not null. So if we have detected our target, we are going to run the detect if out of range method. And now we are going to simply check target equals null or target dot game object is not active. So possibly we have destroyed our player and we have set it to be inactive or the distance between our detector and our target is greater than view radius. Usually we would like to set this view radius to be a bit bigger than the detection radius so that we do not have this behavior where our enemy detects the target then switches back to not detected and so on and so forth. But for our simple example we are going to only use this view radius. So now last thing is that we want to run this coroutine somewhere. And we are going to simply do it in our start method. So let's type start. And we are going to call start coroutine. And we are going to type the name of our coroutine, which is called detection coroutine. So let's type detection coroutine. And this will call our coroutine at the start. And the coroutine itself will restart itself. And it will never stop until we destroy this enemy game object. So let me quickly go back here to the check if player is in range. So this overlap circle method, let's see the documentation for it. Oh, okay. So as you can see, it takes vector to point and radius. It can take the layer mask, min depth and max depth. You have those parameters described here. And basically it checks if a collider falls within a circular area. So this is the functionality of this method and it returns a 2D collider that is overlapping the circle, uh, the recast circle that we have casted. So this covers the detection of our target, but we still want to know if our target is visible. If we are not hitting, for example, or if our player is not behind an obstacle because it would make our enemy shoot at the obstacle constantly even if our player has hit behind it. So just below the start method I will paste the update method and in the update I will check if target is not null I will check uh, set the target visible equals check target visibility and if we set the target to be null or not null for safety we are setting the target visible equals false in our property called target and then if it is not null our update will detect it now check target visible method simply uses the physics.raycast to shoot a ray from our detector towards the position of our target. So this is target.position minus the transform.position. We are using the view radius as the distance of our raycast and we are using the visibility layer to detect any object that is for example on the layer obstacles, on the layer enemy and on the layer player. Now the result of our raycast is a raycast hit to destruct. Now this can have a collider that is null. So if we have hit nothing, it will return a null. But if it is not null, we want to check on what layer is our game object. So here we have our player layer mask that we have defined here. Now this is something like 0000100. Basically, this represents a layer mask where each zero represents one layer. And for example, this is the enemy and we have unchecked it when we were setting the layer masks, so this will be zero. And here is our one which depicts our player layer mask. Now, we can get the result.collider.gameObject.layer and it will return something like one or five, let's say two. So if this is equal to two, we want to convert it to the form of our layer mask. So to convert it to a layer mask, we would need to use bitwise shift to the left operation, so something like this. And this will result is us creating the same kind of layer mask, but if we have two, 
we will set this bit to be 1. So this is 0, 1, now this is 2, and this would be equal to 3, described as the binary value. In any case, we have something like this. So how we compare those binary values, so the layer masks? We can use the binary operation, uh, the bitwise operation AND. And this will basically set those all of those to be zeros, and only if the same one is in the same space here and here, it will set the same to be one. So basically what we can do is we can compare, we can check if the resulting collider, the layer on it, is inside our player layer mask. If it is not, we will return all the zeros, and we, if we convert it to an integer value, it will be zero. So basically what it does is it checks if our game object, if its layer, is on our player layer mask. If it is, it means that this will be greater than zero, and we can safely assume that we have detected the player. Else, so we are seeing the player, the player is visible, else it will return the zero value. So this means that the player is hidden behind an obstacle or another enemy, so this enemy doesn't see the player. I know this part might be a bit confusing because you need to know about those bitwise operators. I encourage you to check out the bitwise operation article on Wikipedia, which presents all the bitwise operators and can, it can explain a bit more about bitwise operators. Okay, great, this concludes our AI detector, so we can now detect our player and it all is driven by those values. Okay, let's go back to Unity. Great. So what we, I will want to do is simply create in our hierarchy an enemy game object, so static enemy. I will reset its transform, and I will drag our tank, that is our enemy, into our static enemy object. Now our AI detector uses its own transform as the center of its detection, but our static enemy will not move. We have our tank, which is the prefab, but we can safely add here an object, let's call it AI detector, and we can drag on this AI detector our AI detector script. Now what we want to set here is the layer masks, so we will create a separate mask for our enemy and for our player. To do that we will need to go to the top right corner of Unity, edit layers, and we will create two layers, player, and we will create enemy. Okay, great. Now, in the previous video of this series, we have created this agent layer that was useful when we have created the shooting mechanic. But the benefit of creating this player and enemy layer outweighs the ability to use the same layer for the bullet. So, instead of this, we are going to go to our edit, project settings, and since we have our enemy and player layer, we are going to uncheck those to ensure that those only collide with a bullet and we do not want to use agent anymore, we will want to keep the uh, collision between hitable and player and enemy, obstacle movements, which are the objects that block movement but not the bullets, and we want the player to be uh, colliding with enemy, with the player and the enemy with the enemy. Great, let's close the project settings, and we should be good to go. Now we can go to our AI detector, and we will want to set those player layer masks, so player layer mask will be simply the player, and the visibility layer will be. Now, we want to detect the enemy. We also want to detect the hittable objects, which are, I think, the obstacles. Let me check on the grid. Obstacles are indeed hittable. Let me go back to our AI detector. And I think this will be it, although we want to also detect the player, since our visibility layer will also detect the player, and we will want to compare the visibility layer with our player layer mask to detect if we are seeing the enemy or uh, if we are seeing the player or not. Now, one thing that we are missing is any feedback to what is the value for our radius. So let me reopen the AI detector, and at the bottom of the script, I will paste the uh, on draw gizmos method, and we are going to call gizmos the draw wire sphere, and we are going to simply draw a sphere from the transform dot position to the view radius, and we could of course change the uh, color of this. So let's say gizmos dot color equals color blue. Okay, let's go back to Unity. 
Great, and now if we have Gizmos turned on, we can see the area where our enemy tank can detect our player. This is a bit too big, so I will reduce it to something like 2.2. Uh, I think this should be good. So now we have feedback about the range of detection for our AI enemy, but we cannot really de test the behavior because we do not expose the target in our AI detector. So what we can do is click those three dots and we can expose the properties so we can add field if you are in unity 2020 we can add field colon serialized field and this will serialize the field and uh, up behind this target visible property and for our target we already have this so we can simply add serialized field to this as well let's save it let's go back to unity Okay, and we can see now that we have the target exposed and we can see if the target is visible or not Let me drag our enemy Somewhere and as you can see the static enemy uh, Object is here, but the tank object is positioned somewhere else. So for start we want those to be in the same place and Last thing that we will need to do is select our player our tank and let's change the layer from agent to be player and for the tank enemy let's again change the agent layer to be enemy and let's not override the objects because our collider is on the tank itself now if we select our ai detector we have target equals none let's press play and let's see if we can see if our tar tank is detected and you can see that our tank is detected this is the player tank but it is not visible so why is that why this field has not been triggered well our enemy is detecting our AI detector is detecting hitable player and enemy so basically this raycast is detecting the enemy itself and this is why our target is not visible so let's stop this and we're going to go to edit project settings okay physics 2d and we have a setting called queries start in collider whether ray line cast starts inside a collider actually detects the collider or not so this setting allows us to disable the situation where our raycast starts inside the collider and the collider is immediately detected. So this collider of our enemy tank will be ignored if we disable this queries start in colliders setting. So let's close our tab. Let's press play again. We have our AI detector selected. I'm going to drive towards our tank and now we can see the target is visible is set to be true. Now, if I drive behind those obstacles here, okay, now it will be invisible. If we drive backwards, it is visible again. So we can hide behind those obstacles and now our target is not visible. Okay, this is becoming a pretty long episode. So in the next part, we are going to actually implement the enemy movement so that our enemy tank can use the AI detector to move our tank or rather to move the turret of it and to shoot at our player if you want to support me please take a look at my patreon website check out my udemy course about creating a 2d top-down shooter using the urp and unt 2020 there will be a link with a discount in the description if you are interested okay great thank you for watching leave a like subscribe and i will see you in the next episode of this series take care